Hello, this is Dr. Samia Rashid. I'm a breast and gynae pathology fellow at HMC Qatar. Welcome to the first lecture on cervical pathology. In this lecture, I will review the basic histology, some benign and premalignant lesions of the uterine cervix. The source is WHO pathology of female genital tract unless otherwise specified. Starting with the basic anatomy, cervix is the lowermost portion of the uterus. It opens outside via the vagina. It is connected to the body of uterus via the endocervix. The exocervix is lined by stratified squamous epithelium and the endocervix is lined by endocervical glands. The transition between the two is called squamocolumnar junction. This is exocervical mucosa with stratified squamous epithelium. Here you can see that the basal layer has a single layer of cells with nuclei perpendicularly oriented to the basal lamina. And as the cells mature, the nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio decreases and the cells acquire clear appearance with glycogen in the cytoplasm. The endocervix is lined by mucin secreting columnar cells. After puberty, the squamocolumnar junction moves towards the exocervix. Hence, the area between the previous or, or original squamocolumnar junction and the postpubertal functional squamocolumnar junction is called the transformation zone. This is that area. This is histologically characterized by the presence of metaplastic epithelium. It's an important area as virtually all cervical neoplasia arise at the new squamocolumnar junction. So, this is the epithelium at the transformation zone. It is called squamous metaplasia. Sometimes it can be confused with dysplasia. However, we can appreciate here that these cells, they look quite monotonous and I have very delicate round nuclear membrane and no atypia and hardly any mitosis. Another mimicker of dysplasia is squamous atrophy. This is usually seen in older women. The epithelium is thin and one can say that the nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio is high. However, once again, we do not have any atypia or mitosis in this area. One of the most common gene pathology specimen is the endocervical polyp. It's polypoidal in shape and here I have very thick blood vessels. And yet again, this is how it appears under the microscope because it's very polypoidal. It is lined by single layer of cells with mucin in their cytoplasm and no atypia. Quite often it is inflamed. So here I see sheets and sheets of plasma cells with some lymphocytes, neutrophils here and there. During pregnancy and rarely in women using exogenous hormones, these polyps can show decidual change. So the stroma, it get decidualized. That means the stromal cells, they have this abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm and very distinct clear cell membrane. A common incidental finding in hysterectomy specimen is tunnel clusters. These are lobules of dilated glands lined by flattened epithelium. These are often near the surface, but can sometimes be confused with minimum deviation adenocarcinoma when they focally seem to be infiltrating. Another benign lesion in the cervix that is usually found incidentally is microglandular hyperplasia. This is a benign proliferation of endocervical glands that is usually seen in pregnant women or those taking hormones. There is no atopia and the mitotic activity is extremely low. Similar to this, there is another entity, the mesonephric hyperplasia. These are groups of glands and tubules lined by low cuboidal epithelium. The lumen is usually filled with dense eosinophilic past positive and diastase resistant material. Coming to the root cause of most of the cervical neoplasia, this is the HP virus infection. It is the most common sexually transmitted disease with over 200 strains. Around 40 of these infect the genital tract. These are divided into low oncogenic risk and high oncogenic risk strains. 
लो उनको जेनिक रिस्क रेंज दैट इज एच पी वी सिक्स इलेवन फोर्टी फोर्टी टू एंड फोर्टी थ्री आर एसोसिएटेड विद जेंटल कॉन्डाइलोमा एंड लो ग्रेड स्क्वायर में सेंट्रापिथी रिलीजन On the other hand, the high oncogenic risk strains that is 16, 18, 31, and 33, 35 are associated with high risk squamous and trapezoid lesion and invasive carcinoma. High risk HPV is also implicated in the development of squamous cell carcinoma at many other sites, including vagina, vulva, penis, anus, tonsil, and other oropharyngeal locations. On average, 50% of infections are cleared within eight months, and 90% are cleared within Two years. A bit on HPV pathogenesis. In normal uninfected cells, cells exit the cell cycle as they leave the basal layer, and this often results in the loss of nuclei in suprabasilar cells. However, in HPV infection, as infected cells leave the basal layer, they remain active in the cell cycle due to the action of E7 protein. Rb family and p53 are tumor suppressor proteins. E7 binds to retinoblastoma that is RB family of tumor suppressor proteins while E6 binds to P53 and results in the ubiquitinization of P53 these proteins facilitate stable maintenance of episomes and stimulate differentiated cells to re-enter the S phase resulting in dysplasia and neoplasia HPV vaccine is now available and recommended for everyone over age 26 years However some adults age 27 to 45 years who are not already vaccinated may decide to get HPV vaccine after speaking with their doctor about their risk for new HPV infections and the possible benefits of vaccination. HPV vaccination in this age range provides less benefit as more people have already been exposed to HPV. Two doses of the HPV vaccine are recommended for all boys and girls at ages 11 to 12 years with a gap of 6 to 12 months. A rather common sequel of HPV infection is condyloma acuminata. It presents as warty growth. It is considered a subcategory of low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion and precursor of cervical neoplasia. It is strongly associated with HPV 6 and 11. Here is another nice picture of low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. This is the basal layer here. It just cross cut. So this is the basal layer, and here I can see some high nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio, some loss of polarization. And as I move upwards, I notice this change in cells that they are they have acquired this clear cytoplasm and weirdly shaped nuclei. So this is what we call the coelocytic change. This is a word that you will hear a lot in cervical pathology, and what it means is the perinuclear halo with resinoid nuclei, and it is most of the times associated with HPV infection. Here is another nice picture of low-grade cell. This time it's properly oriented, so we can see that I have some loss of polarization, some atypical cells, but they're only in the lower one third of the epithelium. Coming to high-grade squamous intraepithelium or H cell, here the dysplasia is not limited to the lower third of the epithelium. We can readily appreciate mitosis throughout, and there is lack of maturation. The differential quite often it's not very easy, especially in small biopsies. So in those cases, we can seek help from immunohistochemistry. So P16, it can, if it's focally weakly positive, then it goes with L cell. But if it's diffusely positive, then most likely this is H cell or high grade cell. However, we need to take help from K67 in most cases as well. which will be positive only in the basal layer in low grade however in high grade it will be positive throughout epithelium hpv most likely will be negative in low grade as this is a combination of the high risk strains and in high grade cell this will most likely be positive so this is k67 and p16 done on high grade cell and here we can appreciate that high grade 
the ki 67 it is positive throughout the epithelium not limited to the basal layer p16 p16 is interpreted very differently from other immunohistochemistry strains so here i have what we call block positivity i have the nuclei and the cytoplasm staining and here pretty much it's staining the whole of this plastic epithelium so this is what is considered positive if the staining for p16 in any case it's focally or weakly positive and it's less than 70 percent that will be negative so like even if only this portion of the epithelium was positive and the rest was all negative or it was weakly positive i would have considered this negative staining dysplasia of the endocervical glands is called adenocarcinoma in situ in comparison to the benign endocervical glands that we saw before that had single layer of very benign looking cells here we can appreciate some crowding along with reduced intracytoplasmic mucin and the nuclei acquiring a more spindle or cigar shaped appearance these glands atypical glands show block positivity for p16 and high ki67 that can aid diagnosis in difficult cases or those with limited sample a variant of ais is stratified mucin producing intraepithelial lesion this is characterized by stratified epithelium containing mucin with nucleotidia hyperchromasia and apoptotic bodies once again p16 and ki67 will show h cell kind of pattern that is block positivity for p16 and high ki67 with that we have reached the end of the first lecture i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think see you in the next lecture